every day in very large volumes. Cargo is transported between the countries of America, Europe, and Asia. Various types and modes of transportation are employed for this purpose. In the first half of 2022, more than 38 million new passenger and light commercial vehicles were sold worldwide. Despite a 12% decrease compared to the same period in 2021, the need for transporting vehicles to different parts of our planet remains necessary and is unlikely to disappear in the near future. Cars can be transported in various ways, by rail, by air, or by trucks with open trailers. Among the most popular and cost-effective methods is water transportation, for example, in containers. However, the majority of new vehicles are transported in an open manner on roll-on, roll-off ships, known as Roro vessels, which are impressive in size. Today, we will tell you about this remarkable method of maritime transportation. Enjoy watching. A Roro ship is a vessel that enables horizontal loading and unloading of cargo. This is done through the use of cargo ramps or equipment extending from the ship's side to the dock. Ramps can be located on the sides, the bow, or the stern of the ship. The stern ramps are often the most commonly used. Stern ramps can be further divided into angled and straight ones. Angled ramps are more versatile as they allow the Roro ship to dock and unload at any pier. To put it simply, while a crane is needed to load heavy cargo onto a conventional ship, a Roro vessel allows the cargo to drive onto the ship on its own. There are several variations of Roro ships, as they are often called. The first type is car carriers, which can be further classified into two types, those that transport only passenger cars and those that can accommodate all types of vehicles. The second type is Conro, a hybrid between a Roro and a container ship. In this case, cars are stored on the lower decks and the cargo in containers is located on the upper decks. The third type is military Roro ships designed for transporting military cargo, such as amphibious assault ships for carrying tanks and troops. The fourth type is row packs, which can transport both vehicles and passengers. This category includes all ferries equipped with vehicle decks and passenger spaces, often referred to as cruise ferries. The fifth variation is Rolo, another hybrid type. Some of the cargo is accessible through the ship's equipment, while the rest is handled using a crane. The cargo capacity of such ships ranges from 1 to 10,000 tons. The main advantage of Roro vessels is considered to be their high loading unloading speed. The hull of a Roro is loaded using rolling equipment, while the deck is used for transporting 20 and 40 foot maritime containers. Roro vessels have a long history that predates the existence of automobiles. In the 19th century, ferries for transporting railway wagons appeared in the United Kingdom. The ideal design at that time was proposed by the engineer and builder Thomas Bush. According to his design, a ferry was equipped with a roll-on, roll-off mechanism. These ships were custom-built. Adjustable ramps were installed at the harbors where they arrived to compensate for changing tides. The height of the structure was adjusted using a slipway. Wagons were loaded and unloaded using stationary steam engines. Railway ferry communication became a real lifesaver during the First World War. Weapons and military equipment were rapidly delivered from the UK to France across the English Channel. This saved a huge amount of manpower hours. In the Second World War, ships specifically designed for transporting tanks, armored personnel carriers, and other essential war equipment began to appear. The first such ship was the HMS Boxer, designed according to Churchill's plans and commissioned in 1941. A larger version of it, capable of crossing not only the English Channel and the Mediterranean Sea, but also the Atlantic, was jointly developed by experts from the United Kingdom and the United States. Several entrepreneurs became interested in their creations, seeing the commercial potential here. The most important of them was Lieutenant Colonel Frank Bustard, who led the Atlantic Steamship Company. In 1946, the British government leased three ships to this company. The first commercial voyage of one of them was made with 64 cars on board. Soon regular routes were established, connecting the United Kingdom and Ireland with mainland Europe. In 1953, two berths for Roro vessels were opened at the Port of Dover. If before that about 10,000 cars a year left the port, just a year later this number increased to 100,000. In the 1970s and 1980s, the Roro fleet began to develop rapidly as companies recognized its clear advantages. Today, Roro ships are true giants. The largest of them can transport thousands of cars, such as the New Horizon class car carriers of a Norwegian shipping company. A total of six such ships were built, and they are the largest car carriers sailing the seas. Let's take the example of the Ho Trapper, which left the shipyard in China in 2016. This 200-meter-long vessel has a deck area of 71,400 square meters, which is comparable to 10 football fields. 
and it's not surprising since it has 14 cargo decks, five of which are elevating. It may seem incredible, but the ship can accommodate up to 8,500 passenger cars. Essentially, it's a huge floating multi-level garage. Access to the decks is provided through an internal ramp system, allowing for efficient use of cargo space. Boarding the ship is done through a stern ramp that is 12 meters wide and has a lifting capacity of 375 tons. The opening has a height of 6.5 meters, which makes it easy to accommodate large transport vehicles, typically no more than 4 meters in height such as common semi-trucks. There's also a side ramp with a lifting capacity of 22 tons. The ship's design and specifications are developed to increase efficiency and reduce environmental impact. Thanks to the optimized hull shape, the Hoe Trapper emits half as much carbon dioxide per transported unit compared to conventional car carrier ships. The New Horizon series ships are true stars in the world of Vero vessels and transport hundreds of thousands of automobiles worldwide every year. One of the undeniable advantages of Roro vessels is the ability to load without specialized equipment. The cargo drives on board with the help of a driver. Additionally, it offers the capability to load oversized cargo on a trailer and roll it onto the ship, unlike container transport, which has standard container sizes. The loading of vehicles is carried out in a specific order and in certain areas, depending on the type of vehicle and the destination port. After the loading is complete, all wheeled cargo is secured to the deck with transport straps until reaching the destination point. This is a very important moment, as cargo movement has been one of the main causes of maritime accidents involving Roro vessels. Commercial Roro ships have always been successful due to their flexibility, integration, and speed of operation. However, despite their commercial success, they have always faced criticism. Modern Roro ships are easily recognizable from the outside by their high sides and lack of portholes. The large surface area of the walls poses a challenge in strong winds. A more serious issue arises from the large cargo openings in the hull, which create potential risks to the ship's water tightness. In such cases, openings in the hull and the absence of bulkheads on cargo decks can allow significant water ingress with freely moving water causing a critical change in stability, not to mention poorly secured cargo. One of the latest major accidents involving Roro vessels occurred in the first half of 2022. The car carrier Felicity Ace, which was sailing from Germany to the United States, sank on March 1st near the Azores Islands. The sad demise was caused by a fire that broke out in the cargo hold on February 16th. Attempts were made to extinguish it, but the situation was complicated by the fact that some vehicles on board the ship were equipped with lithium-ion batteries, which can ignite in a non-ventilated environment. As a result, the entire crew of 22 people was successfully rescued, while 4,000 cars with a total value of over $400 million went down to the depths. Despite such accidents, the rural market continues to develop. It can be assumed that companies will continue to look for ways to increase the capacity of vessels, either by developing new models or upgrading existing ones. However, it is essential to remember that this type of ship is more complex in design and operation. Therefore, any mistake can lead to catastrophic consequences. Write in the comments, have you ever seen the process of loading a car onto a giant ship in person? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Kara Show channel. Also, check out our previous videos. See you later.